All right, gents. Hey, stay on the line if you can. Damien's given us some uh, some extra minutes here to engage, and I, I'd love to hear from you guys. And his first question out of the gate, and those questions have been posted on uh, on the chat line there. You'll see them. Is this question? What are some scripture and passages that come to your mind when you think about action? And uh, I've already got the ver a verse out. I'm gonna Jim Martin. I'm sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to James. That's your book. You talked. Uh, talk I was about, ready. You were ready. I know you were. <laughs> um, and, and 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 I'm gonna actually. I know I, if, if this isn't the verse you're going to share, then you come in right after me. But here's the verse that came to mind. And I'm going to read, I'm going to start in verse uh, 21 of chapter one mm -hmm. and read to the end of 25. So I got four or five uh, passages here. It says, therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness mm -hmm. in humility, receive the word implanted, which you're able to save your souls. Mm -hmm. And here we go. Verse 22. But prove yourself doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. Verse 23, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For once he's looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. Verse 25, now listen, verse 25 in, lands this plain. It says, but the one who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides by it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but mm. an effectual doer, this man is blessed in what he does. And I love the way that verse ends, and what he does. You know, this isn't about talk. Talk is cheap. It's about the actions that follow that. And, 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 and we are encouraged, not chastised, we're encouraged to not just hear it, but to do it. Jim, was that the verse you're going to select, or do you got something else you want to add on to it? Oh, it was, and I was just going to say it's a scripture uh, about action and blessing as well, and I, along with obedience, uh, but I would add right in there uh, after M22, so we all have some form of faith, but without works or actions, it's dead. Yeah. Good. Anybody else got a verse, uh, an action <laughs> verse that comes to mind when you think about what Damien shared today? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll stay on the James wagon there because uh, I was looking in chapter two and uh, verse 18. Um, James says, but someone will say you have works, or you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith by my works. And we all know he's not teaching a salvation by works uh as someone said he's teaching about a salvation that <clears throat> works and um a true salvation produces good works and the doing so uh yeah james has a lot of as jim knows a lot of good stuff to to share with us if we'd only listen and then apply who else has a verse out there scott looks like you're poised and ready to go here yeah, this uh, kind of right after, uh, you're in Hebrews, right? So let's go to Hebrews 12. <coughs> therefore, right, the transition. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run. Right, mm -hmm. that's the action with endurance, the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Mm -hmm. So running, that's the action part here. Yep. Sherman, looks like you're ready to roll too here. Yeah, I, I got a couple, but I just go with the one. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. I think we're familiar with that one, where it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that any man can boast. And it says, But we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works that he prepared ahead of time for us to do. So we're seeing in verses 8 and 9 that we're not saved by works, but verse 10, God tells us that he saved us for works that he prepared for us to do. And so, you know, that intentionality of saying, God, what is the work that you have for me to do? Show me the work that you have for me to do. And then I think the action verses, Titus chapter 2, verse 6 through 8, where it says, similarly, encourage young men to be self-controlled in everything, set them an example by doing good. 
in your teaching show integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned so that those who oppose you will be ashamed because they have nothing evil to say about us. Mm -hmm. God said there's the work that he has for us to do. He wants us to set an example. He wants us, to, I think what Damien said is, man, we got to set an example. You know, we, we, you know, we don't talk about it. We got to be about it. People got to see our faith and not wonder, man, I wonder, is he a Christian? He said he's a Christian. I, I just can't tell. They should be able to tell by the passion and by our, the, our devotion and discipline and how we live our lives. Oh, <clears throat> Thank you, Sherman. Great, two great verses to add on. Who else has something to add here? Hey, Rod, oh. Rod, in my time this morning, I was reading Galatians uh, chapter five. <clears throat> the verse that I journaled about was 16. I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. And in my journal, it's just, just the battle that we live with day in and day out uh, as men the struggles that we have, you know, my, my word is flawed. I'm a flawed man. So how does a flawed man, you know, focus and put myself in a place where these thoughts that go through my head, I'm, I'm not going to let those turn into desires that I act out in the flesh because the goal further down is verses 22 through 25, because I not only do not want to gratify the desires of the, of the flesh, I want the Lord to work in me in a way where the fruit of the Spirit is coming out, the love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. There's no law against that stuff. So as a guy that's a husband, I've got a 20-year-old son living in a house. I've got a daughter and son-in-law living out. How do I, that's the focus. How do I model this? How do I live this out in a way that ripples into their lives and they see that and that's something they look up to? Uh, having taught Sunday school through the years, working in discipleship. Now, how do I constantly encourage people to keep doing those same things? That's good, Steve. You're working hard for the Lord, man. That's what you're doing. And the, and the evidence and the proof of that is the fruit. The fruit, you know, it, it, it's, it, shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't create uh, us being frazzled and frustrated and chaotic. But that peace of God, that joy of the Lord, that those kindness, that's the fruit that begins to emerge from a guy who's working. You know, we're to work out our salvation while with fear and trembling. Yeah. When we're working, we're actually resting in him. And that's the, the irony, the paradox of the whole situation is it's not, it's not cumbersome. It's not a heavy burden. It's actually a, a, a light load because he's doing the heavy lifting. Amen. <clears throat> Rod, Rod, I think also Damien hit his toe in the head, <clears throat> the intentionality, man, it, it's intentional. We we don't default into that mindset of, you know, the passion and, and the discipline. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an intentionality that we have to set our minds that God talks about in Romans 8 and uh, Romans 12, too, about the renewing of our mind. And, you know, but it's the intentionality that Damien talked about, man. We have to purposefully say, man. I'm going to live to please God. I'm going to do it this way. My words, my work, my worship, man, everything. It's intentional. It doesn't happen by accident. Mm -hmm. And Sherman, uh, it's so cool you're on the line here today. When you're intentional with this, does it wear you out? I mean, yeah, I mean, I think some people think, oh, man, that sounds so hard. But that's the that's the irony of this is 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 when you press into the Lord and you get your mind right and you and you and you make him the main thing uh even though you're super intentional it's 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 <clears throat> not this this just heavy burden that you're carrying around i mean talk about that 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 the irony of that when you actually give it up you actually win i mean how does that how does that work in a practical side well it was simple and damian said this also man i'm just feeding off of what he said it's about what you said yes to you know, you know, it's about you have to say yes before you say no. So what have I said yes to? You know, what am I passionately pursuing? If I said yes to Jesus and living to please him, then I'll say no to these other things. So it's about the yes. It's about what I surrender to. It's not a, this isn't about commitment. This is about surrender. And out of the surrender comes the commitment and the discipline and the focus and all that other stuff. So I said, Lord, I surrender to you. That James verse, submit to God, resist the devil, you know, uh, being obedient. So it's about the yes. So you don't get tired of the yes if that's what you're passionately pursuing. Yeah, I want to add on to that. In Matthew 11 is the invitation of rest, invitation of co-laboring with Jesus. 
And he says, come to me for those who are weary, those who are tired, for I will teach you, for I am gentle and humble at heart. And what's beautiful in that moment is the fact of it's not Jesus saying, I want you to go and do this all by yourself, but I want you to do this with me. Mm -hmm. And if you're intentional with it, the laborship of the, the craziness, all the stuff that's going on, the heaviness, it's all about rest. Rest is my word of the year. And he said, Damien, it's not about taking more Sabbaths. It's not taking more days off, but being intentional when you're out and engaging in a community. It's about being intentional when you're at home. It's being intentional when you're out doing speaking engagements. I've learned to not only consume, but to preserve my energy at times and moments, because there'll be moments I, these last, you know, two weeks ago, I was at a speaking uh, retreat at, at Greg's church for this youth conference. And, you know, I speak six times within three days, but the leaders were asking, how are you having this opportunity of going here and here and playing with the kids? Because I said, I'm intentional with it because I will play with the kids for an hour, but I'll still give them, leave myself another hour to sit for a shower and to pray and to just be in moment with God. So mm -hmm. I also think is, are we resting well? Mm -hmm. Not only just doing, are we resting well? Resting is action. And people right. think resting is just sitting still, but resting is action. And it's telling other people that I'm choosing Jesus over than the hurry of this world. Mm -hmm. And that's something for us to really, if we want to put our faith in action, it happens in all kind of aspects of our life, spiritual, <laughs> mental physical, social, everything. And so if you think about your relationships, are you intentional with the relationships that you're pouring into and also being poured out, out to? So that's the, what's amazing is, is the fact that do we have men that's in our corner that's keeping us accountable, but yet we give, 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 give so much. Are we actually receiving anything? And that's why we do get tired. That's why we do get weary. But a question I would even flip back to you, Rod, or even the men is do we actually get tired if we're walking in the purpose that God has called us to be? Do we actually get weary if we actually are walking in the purpose that God has called us to be? Well, because you asked me, I'll answer this first. Um, when, I, when I'm in the center of God's will, um, he renews my strength. He gives me joy. He gives me passion. And uh, when I get weary, it's when when I'm out of God's will and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pressing. So, so uh, let me tell you something I did recently. This is super intentional and hard for me to do because I I, I am an action guy. I mean, I I I burn the candle at both ends. I I get myself in trouble, but I I purposely on on March fourth. I went and, and got away. Uh, in fact, I actually used Ron Schnick's mother-in-law suite. So Sherman, you know exactly where I was I talking about. <laughs> and, and, I, and I was there from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And just uh, I got away from all my distractions here in my, in my home, my office, everything. And I spent nine quiet hours, intentionally got away. Mm. And, and it was so neat to do some very... Um, aggressive things it was a resting experience but it was super active as well and it and it it got got my mind right on some things it, get, it allowed me to just decompress and to and I, I had it with me as my bible some blank sheets of paper and a, and a book a harold finch's book that i told you guys about and i had this thing called a dynamic life retreat mm. and it wasn't a, a time for me to just uh, crash it was a time for me to to dynamically engage in some things and super intentional and i i left there uh just filled up overflowed mm -hmm. uh, and it was because i i needed i needed to have a day to just do some some hard work but to do it in a, in a place where i could actually hear god and uh it was very very special and we're going to actually replicate that experience. Jim Martin and I are dialoguing right now. I made a, a small group of men replicating that experience and helping them walk through some of the same exercises that I went through. One of the one of the neatest things I did that day, just give you a little uh, sneak peek here, is I wrote my obituary, and that's uh, that's uh, that was a joy to do. You know, am I what what and and it really is the obituary that I want to write what what i want to be not where i'm actually at today and it it was just neat to just 
map out some things uh, with that process. And so looking at the end and, and, and putting it forward to the present. So, yeah, Damien, it's not wearisome. When you're in the center of the Lord's will, it is not wearisome. It is, it's a joy. Mm. Other thoughts, other reaction to that? I was going to say that it may not sound like action, but I think it probably is action. That is to be still in his presence. Mm -hmm. That's an, that's an action. And, right. uh, and we're supposed to pursue him. And uh, I have a, a scripture. It's a little it's slightly off topic. Matthew 6, 20, 21. Store for yourself treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy, but where the thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. And so where, where your treasure is, you will pursue that treasure. You will go out and buy that land where that great pearl of treasure was found. Mm. Mm. I think also, man, it just being that sensitive too and, you know, knowing the difference between uh, when we're working for God and working with God. And I think you can find yourself where some a lot of times where, you know, there's so many good things we can do, you know, but are we working with God in that situation? Or are we working for him? And then mm. it's the difference between making the good choice and the right choice. Mm. You know, we make a lot of good choices, but sometimes the right choice is to rest. And God is just as concerned about our rest as he is about our working, you know, because mm. then we need to rest also. So it's the resting and the work. There's, you know, it, both are important. And it's making the right choice versus the good choice. And the good choice is the good choice, but we'll find out that the right choice is the only choice that we should make at that time. Mm, mm. You know, um, Jim said treasure. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I read that. That's one of my verses I've got written down. But some other words that pop up in that Psalm 37.3. Delight yourself in the Lord. So we, we, the Lord is our treasure. We delight ourselves in him. And he goes on to say in that chapter that the Lord makes firm the steps of those who delight in him. So there's treasure, there's delight. Paul talks about the prize. This one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, straining toward the head, I press on towards the goal to win the prize. Um, when I come back to all those words, but treasure is the one that always sticks out to me because, mm -hmm. you know, people do crazy stuff to chase down a treasure they don't they've only heard about i mean think about pirate movies and all that goofy stuff but people do crazy stuff to either find that treasure and once they get it what will they do to keep it and defend it uh, just just goofy stuff but that's not the way it is here with the lord you know he is the treasure he is the prize he's the one that we delight in and and there's seasons of our life where that just drives us absolutely nuts um, and there's other seasons, man, we find the rhythm in the Holy Spirit through the Lord, and we it, it just feels like autopilot. We're on a glide path. And those, man, those are fun places to be when you when you find them. Damien, you gave honor to some guys earlier, um, Jim and Bob, and and uh, you know, were two of the first guys you mentioned, and other men that uh, have uh, you know, not that they're not that they're trying to impress God. But they're just being faithful with the resources and the talents and the abilities that they've been given and the treasures they've been entrusted with. And they're just and they're and they serve not out of, uh, you know, again, out of obligation, but they serve because they want to bring glory to God. Mm -hmm. And your question is, who's someone you see that is acting that out? Someone you see who is. No, not 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 trying to gain. It is not about gaining brownie points with God. We can never do enough work. But mm -hmm. let, let's give some shout outs to some men that you see that are they're getting after it, and they're getting after it for the right reasons. Right, the you know their 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 actions are not uh, just just again to impress others, but they're doing it because they're doing it out of a grateful heart. They're doing it out of a joy of the Lord. Um, Anybody got anybody comes to mind when you think about somebody that does it that way, and you just can't wipe that grin off their face because, and you and you can't, and they, and they don't, and they're not weary, they're not worn out, they're they have they've got renew the the Lord's renewing their strength day by day because they're they're in the game and they're acting this out. Anybody come to mind? I got someone, but it's it's not a guy, it's a woman. <laughs> Go for it. Um, uh, 
this last Saturday, I accompanied, I was an assistant to a, a young lady who's a, who's a nurse who works for the VA. And at her initiation, we went on a homeless outreach and she has a passion for veterans. It's in her blood. He can't help it. We were down by the train tracks. There was a, a, a dishonorably char discharged guy from the Navy. And she's there trying to serve this man. Hey, this, we can work on trying to get his, his discharge changed. And he needs to give him information on how to reach out to the VA or counseling sessions. He's, he goes on mission trips to Honduras. He wasn't just uh, talking the walk. She was walking the walk. And I was privileged to be there with her. So uh, it's not all about men. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But she was she was excellent. So anyway, that's my that's my example. Beautiful. Anybody else got one? Or you've seen that's interesting. Mine is a woman also. <laughs> and, and you know, and, and our pastor pointed her out, Rod, and guys, this this Sunday in church. Her name is Lasagna. I think it's Thompson, but man, she has a hunger, a desire to feed the hungry. She goes to the, the people and feed and clothe those that don't have. I mean, she just has a passion for making sure, man, you know, feeding people and giving them, make sure they have clothing, taking care of the poor and the least. She just, and it burns within her that that's her ministry. That's her calling, man. And, and so just seeing how she's actively pursuing, you know, those that a lot of people don't want to pursue. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Any other examples? Yeah, I have a, a friend of mine, very similar to what Sherman was talking about. This guy's name is Jeff Moore. Um, I, li I work in a small town called Butler, Missouri. He, uh, he's been ministering to people in that town uh, and up in Kansas City. He uh, serves those that uh, are in all kinds of addictions because he himself um, you know, was in that, in that same boat years ago. God rescued him, changed his life. He addresses everybody I've, I've, I've ever heard him say, he's, as soon as he meets you, he says, Jesus loves you with all his heart. That's mm -hmm. his immediate uh, salutation, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, it's a, it, he's like John the Baptist. It's amazing this, what, what God has done with this guy. He's got schizophrenia. <laughs> I mean, the, the man's life is, is, is amazing how God has turned that around and has used that uh, mental health issue um, to connect with so many. And um, he's got a, a ministry he helped start. I'm, I'm helping uh, myself and some other business people down there are helping support this ministry. It's called First Fruits Ministry. Um, he's got a physical building. He's got uh, every week or once a month, he'll go and collect items from donations and just open it up to anybody in that community that needs anything and just provides the physical needs but also ministers them, obviously, spiritually. So uh, he'd be the one that I'd say definitely lives out, um, you know, the, the heart of what we're called to do as, as Christians. So that's, uh, that's an amazing man. It's just to be a part of that, to see that taking place, is, it spurs me on for sure. Mm. And Rod, hey, Rod, let me share with the guys what I shared with you when we talked uh, the other day. I think I talked said this to you. Uh, I'm going to give a shout out to the, Secretary of the Department of Corrections in Florida. This is a guy that one of his staff members told him about the documentary, Show Me the Father. And the, the, the Secretary of the Department of Corrections got so fired up about it, he said, we're gonna show this documentary to every and every state correctional institute in the state of Florida. And mm -hmm. last March 1st, I was in Florida with the Kendrick brothers who uh, helped produce that documentary. And that day, that movie was being shown at 58 correctional institutes in the state of Florida. And he, he just felt, man, if God can speak to men, like Damon, like you talked about, difference makers. And he said, man, we're going to show this in the prison system. And they believe that this is going to catch and it's going to start in Texas and Tennessee and other states where people, where they're going to intentionally put this, intentionally put this in front of men and women. This, mm. this documentary. So I praise God for that secretary of uh, the Department of Corrections and the man that uh, pointed him to that to that documentary. Wow. So Sherman, quest, question on that. Did, 
is the is the showings already being done or are they being planned right now or what do you know what some of the fruit is from the from that is it happened already or is it well be- i know on, on on march 1st i was down there and um that day it was being shown in 58 that 58 day. that day because uh-huh. that's what the uh the, the guy uh the secretary said he said well let's just show it and he said let's just show it and let's do it in one day you know and so and we uh-huh. were there uh that morning we went to a women's correctional institute and we showed it and man, the women re- responded emotionally with crying and all of that stuff. But they said, Hey man, it's going to be different when we go to see the men. So that, that afternoon we went to a men's prison, hardcore brothers, hardcore man. And we had, it was the same response. Guys were gasping and man, you could see the emotion in the guys, man, that they, and they were locked in <clears throat> watching, watching the video. And so, man, it was, I, I just believe God's spirit is moving using that documentary to help, uh, you know, soften the hearts of men and talk about the perfect fatherhood of God, regardless of the father's scars that you may have had, how good your father was, how bad he was. We have a perfect heavenly father. And that's, and that's what it tells guys about. And that fires me up, Sherman. That's so cool. March 1st. So here we are, March. What's the day? March uh, 14th. 14th. So two weeks ago, we had that take place. And we're going to pray that Texas and Tennessee and all those other states you mentioned mm-hmm. will jump on board too. Think about the, not just the ripple effect, but the tsunami effect mm-hmm. of, of that being played, that action step and taking this little thing and it just, it becomes a God thing real big. Well, you think I, about it, if God just started a revival amongst <laughs> men, just amongst men, the difference that would make in our society, just with men. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, God can start a revival anywhere, even in prisons. That's right. This next great revival might be from there. That's right. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what we were telling those guys. I got a chance to talk to the men. I said, man, if God has you here at this moment, you can make a difference right here. You know, you don't have to wait till you're set free. Man, you know, you can make a difference now. Mm. Mm. Sherman, so... Uh... Real quickly, when you, after you saw the movie, you're what they're you're they're watching women in the morning, men in the afternoon, fifty eight prisons. What, how much time did you have to share, and what did you communicate to them um, in the minutes that you had uh, had available there? Well, I didn't have a lot of time to share with them because man, it was a long program watching the movie and stuff. But I, with the men, basically, what Damien said, I just I just encourage them to intentionally understand and set their minds that we are difference makers. That God has created us to make a difference as men, you know, the impact that we have on our families and the families have on the church and the church has on the community and the community has in society. And it starts with us. I said, man, we got to be responsible and accept our responsibility. So even if, even though you're here, you can still make a difference in this, in this, in this place, because this is where God has you at this moment. Mm-hmm. And he'll use this to get you ready, you know, and, and to use you right here. And men and, and guys were buying into it, man. So we'll see, you know, but that was the message to him. Wow, love God it. hasn't forgot about you. He, he, he knows where you're at and man, he can use you right now. Mm. Mm. Damien, that fires you up, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it just, that just goes right in line with, you know, I had an opportunity to talk to my brother who's incarcerated and he's serving a 22 and a half year sentence right now. Um, he's six years into it and to hear that it's getting into prisons. And I pray that it gets to Kansas because that's where he's at right now. And, you know, uh, some of you may not know this, but my father showed up to the concert on February 17th. Um, so first time he saw me um, do something on the stage and um, man, uh, Tell us about it, man. How'd it go? Man. I didn't know he was um, coming. Um, you know, all my family was coming and stuff. And I was trying to figure out why my mom was hanging by the door. And all of a sudden, right before the they opened the doors for everyone to come into the auditorium, uh, he comes walking in and he just comes and embraces me and tells how proud he is to me and he, how much he loves me. And for me, it wasn't the fact that what he told me, but it was the fact that he was the very last person to be walked out the building with me at midnight when everyone else left. And, you know, after everyone cleaned up and everyone was tore down, he stayed and had a conversation with me. And that's the first time I had a conversation over an hour with my father. 
And it was just a, a powerful, a powerful time. He could not just stop smiling from what he experienced. And um, he got to connect with my, my my brothers that's on the team that served time, was actually in the same gang as him. Um, and he was sharing some testimony with them, which it's it's crazy what God has done. I don't know if some of you know this, but um, Kev, um, he was actually going to be on a Zoom call and, and, and also be there tomorrow, but have some things. And uh, but when I met uh, my dad back back in Hayes, we were going for a Hayes show. I had them to meet together and come to find out that you actually were in the same gang, um, which I had no clue that I was even like would even thought that. And so um, they knew exactly what each rank was. They knew my, Kev knew how my dad's rank was. My dad knew what rank Kev was. And um, and it's, it just blew up in such a way of just relationship. But, you know, my, my father did tell me that he said, you know what, no matter what, how much I can be a father to you, I just want to let you know that the man you became today is who I'm so proud of. And um, and I, I took those words and I, and I hold them dearly. And it, and it really that has released a lot uh, and restored some things. And I'll be honest, even every since then, too. Even some of my actions and things I do, just a, couple, a few days ago, my wife said, Damien, I just want to appreciate you because I've noticed you scaling back on some things of ministry to be present with your family. And um, and my prayer has always been that, that my kids, my wife would know that Jesus comes first and they come second. And just to see the what God has done these last six weeks has been a, a, an earth shaking. And like I said, it's really honestly this message it really wasn't a message. What what we did today, that's what I really wanted to get to was hearing scripture, hearing men talk about passionately about Jesus and what God's doing in their lives. And that was my prayer for this specific message that Damien would not be glorified, but yet God will be glorified and God's word will be literally just magnified and everyone will see the fruits of what it can really look like when you actually seek earnestly of who he is and seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, then everything will be added onto you. And so that's something that I just want to encourage you that I'm seeking for First is Kena, and I'm seeking his righteousness in my relationships being restored with my dad. My mind is being renewed through counseling. My heart's being healthy. My wife is loving Jesus more. My kids are getting mad and angry because they want to pray first. And that's something that I never thought I could see my kids arguing because they want to pray first in the family. And I'll be honest. And again, you know, a few nights ago, um, man, sorry, man, I just I have to share this. And, you know, we what we start doing now before our nighttime before the kids to bed is we just play a worship song we put the blessing on um and because we really just want them to sing that their children's and children will know the lord and the favor will be upon them and i was worshiping i was holding my son my little son and my wife was brushing my three-year-old's teeth and my five-year-old was in the living room with me as we're singing the song and that's why i was worshiping my five-year-old just started praying out of the blue, just out of nowhere, just started praying. God, I'm thankful for my daddy. I'm thankful for my mommy. I'm thankful for my sissy. I'm thankful for my brother. God, thank you for loving me. And she corrects us. And we're like, man, man, this would be a perfect situation. She says nothing's perfect but God. And she's just encouraging us and she's praying over us. She's praying for peace in our home. She's praying that love, God's love will just be literally displayed within our relationships. And so for me, I'm just like, that's action. You know, that's something that I prayed when ever since she was born five years ago, that as a father, that not having a father growing up, but to hear those words, I'm proud of you. I love you. And to hear daddy, I love you. And daddy, thank you. Is, is something for me that I always will cherish because my heart and my mind is telling that I'm surrendering to Jesus because I don't get those words if it's about me. I don't, I don't hear those words if it's about me. And so I receive those words because I truly surrender and I said, Jesus, it's all about you. So when my wife stands before the Lord, she's falling in love more with Jesus more than she fell in love with me. That when my children walk the path that they fall in love more with Jesus than they fall in love with me. Rod, you're talking about obituary. I pray that my ceremony, that people will talk more about Jesus. They don't talk about Damien. They'll talk about more about Jesus and Damien than they actually talk about Damien as a person. 
And that's been my prayer and always be my prayer. When I'm 20 years old or I'm 78 years old or 90 years old, my prayer will be that people will say, Damon passionately loved Jesus, passionately served people and put people first. And, and that, that's been my heart to really reach the one. And so, so yeah, that, that's what it turned out to, um, Sherman with, you know, having that, that night with my dad and we got crumble cookie. We got right before it closed and got to share that experience. And, you know, it's just a wonderful time. And, um, him got to hold my, you know, his grandson the next morning, which, which was a powerful time. So, you know, three generations, I never thought I would see a three generation men in my, in the same home. And I got to see that. And so that was, that was really powerful. Um, so, so yeah. Hey, Damon, Damon, the, uh, the eyes are the windows to the soul and those tears coming down out of your eyes is action and that's your heart showing us your deep love for your family and god so love you brother thanks chris oh, thanks jim oh it's good it's good guys Anybody else? I'll share my one of my favorite scriptures, Psalms ninety twelve. Lord, teach us the brevity of life, for it is the beginning of wisdom. Mm. I love that. Mm. I think so too. I just want to say, Damien, thank you, man, for <laughs> thank you. Period. You know, um, just thank you for your for your life and what God is doing in you and seeing the promises of God. You know, I think that the 128th Psalm that talks about, you know, God says, blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You'll eat what your hands have worked for. You'll be happy and it'll go well for you. And then he says, your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children like young olive trees around the table. Mm -hmm. Surely the man who fears the Lord will be blessed in this way. Mm -hmm. And that's, we're seeing what God is saying through what you're saying right there with your family, your wife and your children, your wife, the fruitful vine, your children, the young olive trees, mm -hmm. and how God says, I'll bless the man who fears the Lord in this way. Mm -hmm. So I just thank you, man, for, you know, I know we got other men on this Zoom call. They have a testimony as well, but for you to be the one that's giving your testimony, 28 years old, man, you motivate me and my kids are 41, 43, and 50, you know, but man, the, the, it's a motivation, man. And the thing you just said, man, that guys, I boy, that hit me. That our wives would learn, they would love Jesus more than they love us. Man, life. I never heard that before. Mm. I want my wife to love Jesus more than she loves me. Mm. Amen. Mm. I appreciate you, Sherman. Actually, you shared that 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 passage when you was here in Kansas City last time. I was, went directly to to my wife and I said, babe, let's pray this over us. And we, ever since then, we have prayed that specific passage over us that we would be that. And so we are able to see our children's grandchildren and children and just continue to walk in that blessing and that favor. And again, thank you. You know, you coming here for a few days and like I said, Rod and, you know, everyone that's on here, Chris, Chris, I mean, Chris Bell mm -hmm. here, a lot of people don't realize how much, action that he puts in for all the things that he does for TJIW and, you know, getting up early in the morning, making sure those Zoom calls are ready, making sure the camera stuff's ready on Wednesdays. And, and on top of that, he shows up. He doesn't even just, he doesn't even sign up. He just shows up, um, which I just love about him. You know, the last two years, United Summit, he even signed up. He just showed up. And that's why I just, I just say, Chris, thank you as well, man. Um, and like I said, it's just, I'm, I'm grateful to work with Rod and Greg and I'm being in partnership with them with this, within this ministry. And I can, I can say less with all the men that's still on the zoom call from Scott and all these guys. So I, again, appreciate you and, um, just you guys, you guys are amazing men of God. So I appreciate all you for real. And Sherman, again, thank you. Um, I do cherish a relationship that you and I have now and, um, and it's, there's some things that, you know, God has really deposited some of our conversations we had even after you left from Kansas City. And so um, it's it's been a really powerful, powerful time. And I'm just, again, like you said, what would this world look like if revival happened within our men? And, you know, this is the time is now. The time is now. Not later, not before. It's time is now. So. That's it. Amen. And.
Hey, Bobby Bell Jr., you've been on all the call, and you're usually not quiet. I know you got something that God wants to say through you too. What What do you got for us, buddy? Because I know, I know, I know, I know, I know you've been attentive the whole time. You've heard every word we've spoken. Uh, it, I'm just basking in the the glory of the Lord, man. Because this whole message has just been enlightening and good and deep, and just the richness that Damien's walking in right now. You know, Grayson's in town, and we last night we got together with the Spanies, and we just prayed over Grayson and just seeing where his heart is. I mean, he's in such a, a good place, and I mean, the forces of the world are against him, and yet he still has the strength to rise up, and I think it's because of the seeds that have been watered, and so many men on this channel have been part of that and on top of that you know um, I, I meet with the city of Lee Summit today about the Bell legacy and I don't know what award or I'm up for or something the whole family is and and I was like I, I don't really care about it but I, I do care that my kids understand that that's what we're trying to do is build a legacy mm -hmm. for God and the awards and all that stuff don't mean anything. But what means something is if you're not building for Christ, you got nothing. Yeah. And I don't want to build anything else. And it's that intentionality mm -hmm. that we've been talking about. And we just committed as a family to move only in intentionality. Mm. I mean, it was two days ago. Mm. We talked about you, you block out your time in 15 minute segments and every 15 minutes has an intentionality. Mm. And if it's not in there, are you supposed to do it? Yeah. And then you, you put it before the Lord and you say, is this something I'm supposed to do? Mm. And it's most often it's not because otherwise you would have planned for it at, at, on Sunday when we do our planning days. It would have been on the schedule. It had been there because you had intent to do it. And it's those things that get executed. Mm. And it's just like we said coming out of James. It, it, it's not about what you hear. It's about what you execute. And if you're not executing, what good does it do? So I'm just sitting here just going, man, God is so funny and how precise he is on his timing. And just being on the call, I got on the call early today. I didn't know why. You know, I just, I've been soaking it in. And Damien, as a, as a 28 year old man, I'm glad to see you're out in front of us all. You're on your way, bro. You're on your way. If we can keep you on course, you can get a lot more people on course. That's for sure. I appreciate so, it. Bro. God bless you, man, and keep rolling. Thanks, bro. Love you, man. I wanted you guys to hear from Bobby because I knew Grayson's in town. He's been at the Naval Academy for the last uh, almost a year now. He's been there, well, nine months. And he is he's really, really on, on point right now. And uh, we love Grayson and we love the legacy of the Bell family. And Bobby, what you're doing to, to bless him and to pour into him and equip him and pray for him. I love that, you know, you're, you're going to your knees along with the Spanies and other families uh, on, on his behalf, because he's he's at the tip of the spear right there uh, with, with the next generation. So love it. Gentlemen, it's been a great day. Any, any last words before we say goodbye this morning? Thanks for grace and service. Amen. The tip of the spear. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. I would just like to say again, thank you to the men that are, are still on here because so many of them have, uh, I don't know, planted seeds and watered my family so richly. Uh, and it's through the brotherhood that we, we don't fall. 
I mean, just the accountability that we have and the structure that Rod and Greg have set up and, and you know, Dan Erickson, you know, I mean, it runs deep. We got guys all over the country that are, are holding us accountable. And I, you know, uh, another one of my dad's players died. You know, he's had like four or five of them die in the last few months or whatever it's been. And you just see the lack of accountability in that group. People who are, are afraid to speak out because, you know, you're famous or you can throw a football or you can run with the football, whatever it is, man. And I, I pray that this group never loses the ability to see something and say something, to correct something Amen. back to Jesus. That's right. That has to be in place. And so we as godly men professing to follow Christ, if you see something that Jesus. needs to be checked, check it. Check it. And it's just mm -hmm. like at, at the Bible study on Friday when Pastor Brian checked me because I was saying something bad about the president. And he checked me. He said, you got to pray for him. And I looked around the table and I said, there's 15 guys here. I got checked by one. I said, something's wrong with that. I want to be checkable. Amen. And so that has to be possible if we're going to end up where we're supposed to be. That has to be possible. Amen. So I'm saying, check me. Don't be afraid of the re repercussions right. of me getting mad. Check me. That's right. Do your job and check me. That's all I'm asking. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Rod, I was going to tell you too, um, when I was there, you gave me a couple a book, a couple books, and you gave me a book by Dan Erickson, I think, where he had done all these di different, you know, devotionals. And uh, one day he had one of the devotionals, it was, he was calling the churches to man up. And man, that was powerful. And what I did, I sent that out to the men, uh, the leader of our men's ministry in at our church, and he sent it out to every man um, in our church. And so I just wanted you to know that Dan's words, man, are, are bearing fruit today and still uh, encouraging guys. So I just wanted to thank you for that. And then, you know, like I said, in closing, for my part, thank you, uh, Damien, because what I get out of it, and, and Bobby, what you just said was that we have to live life with purpose, on purpose. You know, we have to be purposeful and intentional. And so I think that's the charge that I really, the motivation I get today, man, is living with purpose on purpose. And I um, yeah. appreciate you guys, man. Really do. You bet. Speaking of Dan Erickson, yesterday was his uh, six year anniversary of uh, being with Jesus and uh, he passed away March 13th of 2017. So, um, some of you know, yesterday was my birthday. I celebrate my birthday, and I also celebrate Dan's uh, Dan's uh, home going with Jesus. It's on wow. the same, day, and, and, same uh, day, yeah. And uh, he uh, his his legacy is strong. And Dan always told me, he says, "Rod, I don't want to live one day longer than God wants me to live. I don't want to be, I don't want to be, uh, I want to be in so so center of His will that when He wants to call me home, I'm ready to go home. And and may that be our prayer too, guys. That we'll work, work, work." Till the till the Lord calls us home, and Amen. then we can then we can rejoice in the in the labor that uh, we put in, the work we put in, the action we put in. Yeah. All right, gents, good to be with you. God bless you. Uh, always uh, always a blessing to be here on Tuesdays, and some of you will see you tomorrow Wednesday as well. And uh, and thank you again, Damien. Gr great word, and uh, can't wait for tomorrow, brother. Yes, sir. Thank right. you. Brother. Carry on, gents. <laughs>